Okay, so we're now at the point in my game where I have this black rectangle that can move around. I have this red rectangle here that I can move around using the mouse. And I've managed to design the game such that the red, when the red rectangle touches the black one, it generates this touching. So it's actually checking for an intersection of those two objects. Okay. So what I want to do is, right now all the information is being outputted on the left hand side here in my general output, which the user can't see if you embed this on a web page. All they see is this applet screen that that I'm moving the mouse around on. So I want to display this information to the screen. So to do this, I'm going to remember that anything that's to be painted to the screen has to be done in the paint method. And now just to be clear, you can find ways to paint stuff in other, in other methods, but it's always good to try and do everything in the paint method when you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out some information and to do that there's a built-in method called g.drawString and drawString really simply prints out a string to the screen so I could put the word for example score and then the following two are the xy position so if I think of the top left hand corner of the screen as 0, 0 I might want to do 20 across and 20 down so if I build this and I run this and now I run this file there's the top now you see that score up there in the top right oh pardon me you see that score there up there in the corner now you will notice the flickering that's going on and this is something that can be a little annoying there is a technique to get around this flickering but we're gonna have to kinda figure out some things before we can do that so I'm gonna close this down but because what I also want to do is I want to actually print the score to the screen so I have to print a score and then I'm gonna print out the score field so now if I build this and I oh pardon me and I run this game run file there it is notice now the score actually gets built up on the screen so I can get rid of this now on the side and just work with this kind of work from there okay this is great but I want to add a time scale to my game I want my game to kind of count down in time so to do this I'm going to introduce a second timer so notice down here I have this timed event so I'm going to copy this timed event and I'm going to make another one so what I'm going to do is go right here and so let's just copy this so essentially what I've done is I've taken my timed event and I've made another class called timed event which I can't do because I can't have two classes with the same name so I'm going to call this one timed event one and what this timed event is going to do is it's going to keep track of the current how long the game's been running so if I scroll up to the top I need to make a field to keep track of the time so this is going to be the time field and the time is going to be stored in an integer and we'll call it time and initially the time will be zero so now here's what I want to do this is a separate timed event if you remember this is the code that we used to initiate the timer so if I take this code and copy it and paste it and instead of making timed event we make timed event 1 oops pardon me so we're gonna make this timed event 1 so notice timed event 1 timed event 1 I can't call it action because I've already made an instance called action so I'm gonna call this action 1 and so I'm gonna come in here and call action 1 so and I can't call the timer T because I already have a timer T so I'm going to call it T1 and so I need to say T1.start so what's happened now is this is calling now this other action every 40 milliseconds but remember if we scroll down this second action what I wanted to do is to keep track of the time so every second I want the time to increase by one so I'm going to say time is equal to time plus one in here so if I want this time to increase every second 
what I'm then going to do is come back up here, and I'm not going to call this every 40 milliseconds, I'm going to call this every 1000 milliseconds. So, if I do a g dot draw, draw string, and I draw the time, and then I'm going to say plus time, and I draw it in the position, let's go, well, we want to go the 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 width of the window we can get by saying get width. We're going to say minus 100 and then we're going to go 20 down. This is going to print the time on the right hand side of the screen in 20 down. So now if I build this file and now if I run this What you'll see, as soon as this runs, we're getting a little bit of a lag here. You'll see a timer now, and let's drag this down a little bit here. Now a timer is keeping track of the time, and the score is keeping track on the other side. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. There's a lot of information in here, and shortly there's going to be some more detailed tutorials that get into a little bit more of the technical nitty gritty. But one of the reasons I designed this was the hopes that someone with, you know, a moderate level of program experience is able to do something that's a little bit more fun than printing out a couple words to the screen. If you have any questions or anything like that, please, as always, don't hesitate to contact me. Take care.